And we have our next feature now, Felix. What's coming up? Coming up right now, Destination Germany. Here we are taking you on a journey to somewhere in the country which is well worth a visit. Whether you're a tourist or a permanent resident, a foreigner or a German citizen, here we'll be covering the famous sites as well as the little-known corners of Deutschland. All that matters is showing you that Germany is an interesting and exciting place to visit. If you enjoy the destinations we talk about each week, check out our website at thisweekingermany.de where we will have some photos of this week's destination as well. And Rob joined us last week, which was very nice of him to join us, uh, talking about the Technoseum in Mannheim in Baden-Württemberg. Now, it sounds like some crazy techno club, but it isn't. It's actually a museum focused on technology and industrialization. You can learn about the Industrial Revolution in Germany and what inventions took the country to where it is today, from public utilities to trains to robots. The Technoseum, the Technoseum it's really difficult to say, by the way, shows you how things work and even lets you try a lot of them out yourself with their interactive exhibits. But now we have a special guest on the program. Joining us is Rob. Hello, Rob. Hello, everybody. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> so uh, you may or may not know that we're recording this in advance, but still, it would be rude of me not to ask, how's your holiday going? <laughs> It's going even better than last week. Yes, uh, we've had some delicious food. I've gotten to catch up with some family. Yeah, I'm having a, a great time. But I, I miss everyone in Germany. Of course you do. And you are very good at faking things in advance. <laughs> So now let's move on to explore um, this week's destination. What is it? This week we're going to the northeast of the country to the state of Brandenburg. The capital of Brandenburg is Potsdam, where we will find this week's destination. Not the entire city itself, as there are a million and a half things to do there, but specifically the Dutch Quarter, which is centrally located in the city. What exactly makes the Dutch Quarter of Potsdam the Dutch Quarter? Is this where going Dutch in the restaurants was being invented? I don't know exactly, <laughs> but there are quite a few restaurants, which I'll get into later, that you can go Dutch in. But Potsdam has been a major part of Germany for quite some time. During the early to mid-1700s, there was some urban expansion going on. The expansion was led by a Dutch architect together with the support of Frederick William I. They laid plans to construct new houses in this area. Frederick William unfortunately died before it was finished, but his son agreed to finish what they started. And what was the outcome for their building project? This Baroque city plan consisted of four square blocks equaling 134 brick buildings. If you've seen architecture in the Netherlands, you'll have some idea of what it looks like. It's actually the largest grouping of this style of architecture outside the Netherlands in all of Europe. So you're actually telling us that this is like going to the Netherlands without actually leaving Germany. Hmm... <laughs> yeah, k kind of. Uh, now this area in Potsdam brings quite a lot of tourists who both want to see the architecture as well as experience the culture. So if you're Dutch, then you can get the feeling of home without having to go to the Netherlands. What sort of unique culture will you find in the Dutch quarter of Potsdam? Is there anything Dutch about it apart from the architecture? Well, besides having a lot of the residential houses, there are also a wide variety of different interests for the public to enjoy. There are many little boutique shops along the streets, as well as an assortment of art galleries. Also, many come for the food and drink. Yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> many restaurants and pubs have patio seating right on the street, so guests can feel like they're right in the middle of everything. But, this being the Dutch style of housing, there are also a lot of little courtyard gardens to get a more intimate experience. It sounds absolutely beautiful. And do you have any particular recommendations of a time of year to visit or anything like that? Or is it a year-round kind of place? It really depends on if you like crowds or not. While popular, you shouldn't feel too overwhelmed with tourists most of the year. But there are some special festivals that bring in a lot of people. The Tulip Festival had been going on this month. The next major festival is going to be the Pottery and Ceramic Festival in September. And then, at the end of the year, the quarter is known for having an especially nice Dutch-themed Christmas market. Absolutely beautiful. Rob, will you be joining us again next week? I can't stay away. You couldn't pay me to stay away. In fact, you don't pay me at all. That's right. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I'm not going to pay you anything. <laughs> and Because I'm not even paid myself. Well, well, well have a, a wonderful time and we'll see you next week. Ciao. Thanks for joining us, Rob.